Welcome everyone to the State of the Channel for the month of July 2019. Yes, I know this is going up on August 1st. Kind of uh, illustrates how busy things have been. As always, I'm going to give a kind of a few minutes to talk about what's been going on with the channel, what I have planned, and a special bonus topic as well. Unfortunately, we lost some Patreon supporters over the last month, and we didn't hit our monthly goal. But Again, I knew that going into these things that it wasn't going to be a case of every month getting the amount of money that I would like. But we are still growing in terms of subscribers, and thank you to everyone who is continuing to stay around and join the content. I saw a few new people on the last few weeks. My goal, I would like to hit 5,000 by the end of the year, and we'll see if that happens. But my ongoing saga of contacting libraries and systems for doing presentations continues. I've gotten some more interested people, but I feel like I'm stuck in my own 4X game right now, as the stuff I'm doing has no immediate benefit, but will make or break me in three to four months' time. So we'll see how things are going there. I actually have seven presentations scheduled for October and November which is going to be exciting and nerve-wracking at the same time, as they actually chose new ones that I haven't developed yet. So, that's another thing to add to the schedule. Speaking of which, I actually got my first royalty check, or I actually got all the paperwork done. I'm going to be receiving royalties on my first book, so I'm officially a published author for real now. I'm so excited about that. And I got the prints for book number two that I have to review. And then that book goes to the printers and is due out in October. So very exciting time. And that's the one that I'm going to be pushing very heavily for, especially when it comes to education. Other than that, uh, there's not much else going on, at least right now for the month of July. I'll be talking about kind of my plans at the end of this video. But we got a little special treat here as I wanted to talk a little bit about the podcast that I picked for the Josh Boxes. And I was kind of like actually having trouble figuring out 10 that I wanted to include in that. And I'm still not sure I want to continue doing the Josh Boxes after this initial set goes out. I really want to hear from you guys if you like this idea of like a physical good with my older podcasts. But the 10 that I chose were kind of those that stuck out to me, or stood out to me in some way, shape, or form. And like I said, it was a lot harder to pick them. There are a lot of ones that I enjoyed, but, you know, getting the ones I guess were either the cream of the crop or the weirdest ones was a lot harder. But let's go down the list, shall we? The first one here is my very first interview with Chris Park. This is actually our very first developer interview, and this was before I had a a headset microphone, and I was even doing the podcast editing. My friend, and at the time co-host Ken, was handling all that. And this was our very first time talking to someone in the industry, and it definitely showed. I mean, this is very much early Josh. This was, I think, November of 2012 or December of 2013 in terms of when we did that one. And also, keep your ears open, because Ken pisses off Chris really bad in this one, which is just hilarious. And since then, I've gone to become friends with Chris and had him on multiple times. But this was basically the start of our interviewing process. Now, the next one I included for weirdness. This is my famous, or quote-unquote famous cast, with developer, author, and all-around very strange person, Chris Crawford. He is, of course, the man who is probably most famous, known for running out of a GDC talk screaming about fighting dragons. I'm not kidding, that actually happened. And he was on to talk about his Patreon back game, Simu, Sibu, something like that, that was set to change the world of game design. Since that podcast, the game has unfortunately been cancelled. But speaking to him about things was just... Whew, that was an interesting one. And you can tell when you have like the hosts and the guests clicking. This was not one of those times. And this is included just for the sheer, again, oddness of that podcast. Now the next one I'm going to save for last for a special reason. 
But this next one, this is my very first time talking with game developer, author, and teacher Ernest Adams. He wrote, I believe, Game Architecture and Design. I forget the full title of it off the top of my head, but he is considered one of the experts when it comes to game design. He was the found one of the founders of the IGDA back in the day. And this is a very important cast for me because this was when I was starting to really figure things out or start to develop that analytical viewpoint that has served me for these years. And talking to Ernest about design was a way of not only kind of bouncing ideas off of him, but also figuring out what it meant to design a game properly. I think this would have been the cast, or it was either this one or the second one that I had with him, that we coined the term harmonizing game design or when all the elements and mechanics and systems of a game come together to create something greater than the sum of its parts and again just a really great discussion with him now the next one this is a cast that pretty much since like day one of starting game wisdom i wanted to include and that was talking to paul ritchie and fred ford of toys for bob and I hounded them for years to get them on for this cast. This occurred, I believe, just a few weeks or maybe a month or so prior to the lawsuit that they had with Stardock over Star Control uh, Origins rights, or just the rights of that franchise. But I want to have them back on for our cast, and I really hope it doesn't take another five to seven years to do that. But the next one, this is my podcast with Joe McDonough. This was a cast that Ken and I did with him when he was working with Blue Manchu Games on Card Hunters. And you can see it here if I get the pop-up. This was a very long podcast. Or, I guess I should say long by relative standards for you guys watching on the YouTube channel who see that we routinely go to two to three hours like it's nothing. But back then, this was when I was still young and fresh. Again, probably should include air quotes there. And that cast just kept going and going and going. And it began to start frame this idea that talking about game design is not easy. And we can just keep on going as long as our voices and I guess our vital signs continue to grow. Now this next cast is a bittersweet one. This is the cast I had with Vic Davis of uh, Cryptic Comet. And... This is a sad one because I loved his games. He was a very interesting developer to have on. But since that cast, he stopped making video games. I think he got out of the game industry. But he told me that I was one of the few people that uh, he talked to about game design. He did one thing with Tom Chick as well and maybe like one other one. And it was such a great pleasure to have him on. And he talked about the frustrations there was of being an independent developer, especially during the closed off era of Steam. For a lot of developers out there who think that Steam is horrible now and you know why should we be on it, they don't understand what it was like otherwise and more importantly what it was like to try and be an independent developer when you didn't have a storefront that could you could rely on. And it was just such a fascinating discussion with him. I was also including to include the uh, podcast I did with the Dicey developer, but I think this one may be a little bit more poignant and maybe a little more interesting for people watching. Now, the next one, I guess going from something that was uh, bitter to something more fun, this is a cast we had with the Robot Loves Kitty developers. It was a, a, I'm not sure it was a boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband and wife team at the time. And this is one of the casts I reference whenever I talk about how amazing it is about what developers do to make their games. They spoke about living in a treehouse for two to three years to design their very first game. And just a very funny cast. And they talk about some interesting ideas that I don't know if they ever had a chance to do. But... Like, if the Vic Davis cast was more on the depressing side being an indie developer, this one is the more, you know, happy-go-lucky one. Now, the next one, this is our first time that we did a developer roundtable cast. This was an idea that I've been pitching around, it's been on the Patreon for some time, about having multiple developers on to talk about various topics of game development. I don't even remember which ones we had on for this one. It's been a very fascinating idea and something that I've been wanting to do more of. 
But it's been one of those things that was kind of caught in the crossfire of trying to do everything else. Back then, it was simply just the podcast and the website. There was no YouTube channel, there were no presentations, it was just that. And it was a lot easier to schedule things back then. Today, not so much. And it's something I would love to do more if I can ever hit that point of being stable in terms of finances and the work that I'm doing. Who knows, maybe we'll be able to do one again in the future. Now, the next one, this is a podcast I had with Sandy Peterson. He is the developer of Cthulhu Wars, and I didn't know it until he started talking about it, but also one of the developers at Ensemble Studios who worked on the Age of Empires series. And this was just, again, like a fascinating uh, collection of game design topics. And I always love it when I talk to older members of the game industry and kind of get their thoughts about how things were and where they are now, and hopefully where things are going in the future. But he's definitely one that we had on for a second time to talk more about the Orcs Must Die tabletop game. But I would love to pick his brain more about game design topics. With that said, the final one, this was a special cast that we did with a panel talking about video games and education. We talked about kind of the strokes it was, and this was back in 2015, in terms of convincing people that video games had value in the education and school context. And the reason why I saved this for last was this kind of began this whole idea of educating people about game design and where things have gone with the library presentations. And again, just a very interesting, I guess, cross-section of podcasts I have here. But those will be included in the Josh box that I have just about finished preparing, and I hope people enjoy listening to them. But... With that said, coming up in August, I'm going to be doing more work with po- the game my Switch set up for either recording footage or streaming. I still don't know if I can get the streaming part done. I hope I can, but we shall see. But we're also going to be trying to set up a formal multiplayer game night. I'll be making another announcement about that probably tomorrow. But thank you for watching this video. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, let me know in the comments below. But I really do appreciate everyone for the support here. And here's hoping for another great month of content here and on Game Wisdom. But have a great day, and I'll see you guys later tonight. If you're looking for a book on design, my first title, 20 Essential Games to Study, is out now. It is available where most books are sold, and it comes in paper, hardcover, or digital copies. This is the perfect book for anyone interested in learning about game design, whether you are a student, enthusiast, or just a fan. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design, and come back later tonight for our regular streamings. But that's it. And tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, we are examining the art and science of games.